Coke Zero. Still delicious. <laughs> Welcome to Ridge Life. I'm Tim. Today on Ramblings, I got it done. I finally got it done. Y'all know I plan on retiring very soon. Plan is very soon. How soon? Don't know how soon. Don't know when. A big question when. But very soon. So one of the big things was health care, right? If y'all follow Ridge Life for a while, you know I'm a military veteran, Navy veteran. And uh, I was on a submarine, nuclear electrician, fast attack submarine. And uh, been in the steel industry for 26 years, going on 27 years. And uh, about ready to retire. So now uh, I, need, I, I need to think about health care because I'm not, I, I'm, I'll be 55, right? I'm on 53 right now. I'll be 54 here shortly, and then I'll be 55 next year. Uh, so not, not, not eligible for Medicare. <laughs> Good ways away from Medicare, right? So um, the VA is a big option. I found out I, I do have health care through the VA, and I went to use it, and I spent two hours on the phone calling the uh, VA in Memphis. Took me forever. I tried to call the patient advocate. You know, I already registered with uh, healthcare.gov. I already have an account. I'm, I'm already registered. I just need to get a referral to go to see a, to go to go to the clinic to see a doctor, get a primary care physician. So I um, try to call the patient advocate. I call. And uh, the extension, no answer, and then hangs up. Doesn't even, doesn't even leave a uh, voicemail. So I call back again, same thing. So then I call the eligibility office, right? I figure I call the eligibility office. And uh, I get a voicemail, but, you know, no return call. Definitely not immediately. So then I... Um, call the operator and I say uh, I'm using trying to use the VA for the first time I'm already registered She's, and uh, she said I'll direct you to the eligibility office so I said well I called that anyway she called it rang it rang it rang no answer and uh, that went to voicemail so then I called the operator oh no 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 none of them went to the voicemail that's right because that, 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 otherwise, you know, I would just wait for a return call. No, none of those went to voicemail. They went, both of them went and they rang and rang and rang and then disconnected. There was no voicemail. So I called the operator. She said, uh, I'll transfer you over to the eligibility office. I was like, oh, okay. It rang and rang and rang. So I called her back and she said, how may I direct your call? And I said, well, th this is what happened. I'm trying to use it for the first time. And uh, she said, how may I direct your call? Again, just interrupted me. I said, ma'am, I'm trying to tell you that you, you already transferred me once and I'm trying to figure out, click. She hung up on me. That's right. On a US veteran, she hung up on me. So um, I call another number. And uh, this time I call one that just not even, you know, remotely related, I guess, to, to what I needed. Just to see if I could get somebody. So I got this lady on the phone. Her name was Antoinette. Very, very nice lady. Oh, the rollers. Oh, another piece of equipment showing up. And that, this is not the one I've been uh, teasing about. This is the flat roller for the uh, driveway. So we got one, two, three, four, Five pieces of equipment on the ridge. Woo! Five pieces of equipment on the ridge. Yeah. I thought, what, what, what that noise was. <laughs> um, back to my story. So, uh, Antoinette answers, and she said, uh, I told, tell her my story, you know, trying to use VA for the first time. She goes, uh, Mr. Roberts, I've got two people in, in my office. Can you hold? And, uh, I'll get to you. And see, I'm totally messing this story up. Earlier, 
on those other calls, I was put on hold, right? Waiting for voicemail or a hold and uh, just never got, never got through. That's what it was, never got through. So anyway, I, I wait for about 12 minutes and uh, she comes back and she takes my social security number, takes my information. And uh, she said, oh, I'm sorry, another person came in. So she's a very busy lady. They must be very, very understaffed at the main hospital there, VA, Memphis. And uh, she, about five or six minutes, she comes back. She said, Miss Roberts, sorry about that. You know, I'll take care of you. So she did. She uh, got me uh, entered into the system. I already, you know, was already registered, healthcare.gov, VA. And um, she said, what, what clinic you want to use? Well, I looked at the clinics that were near me. There's one in Mississippi. There's one in North Memphis. And, of course, there's the hospital. And there's one in Dyersburg. Um, but the one in North Memphis is probably about the closest. Uh, not a very good area, I think, but it's still one of the closest. So I, I said that one. It was called the Covington Clinic. It's not up in Covington. It's not that far up. I wish it was. <laughs> It'd be a nicer area. Uh, this is uh, Raleigh. 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 Uh, area of Memphis, Raleigh. If you might know where Raleigh is, Raleigh, 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 Raleigh. Um, the, Ra the Covington Clinic there in Raleigh. And uh, she said, okay, I'll get you set up. And she got me an appointment for Monday the 10th. Monday the 10th. That was yesterday. That's right. That leads me up to today. Okay, I'm terrible. I'm really off on my storytelling today. The, that uh, roller being delivered up there kind of got me. <laughs> I drive up there. It's about 40 some odd miles. I drive up there and get to that area and there's check cashing. I was on the phone with David from Come On Homestead at the time I was driving in. I was, he, he was on his way to do his test for his motorcycle and I was on the way uh, to, do, to do my VA appointment. And I passed a check cashing title loan, check cashing title loan, check cashing title loan, KFC, check cashing title loan. There was four of them. And there was a church's chicken, a crystal. I'm trying to remember what else there was. But there were so many t title loans and cash advance places. I was like, whoo, you know you're in a pretty rough neighborhood whenever it's, uh, you get a lot of those, okay? It, it just, that's just the way it is. So I pull up, and uh, there's the VA clinic. And I go inside, and it, 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 it actually doesn't look too bad. Everyone was in masks. And there was a sign on the bathroom that said, uh, mask are mandatory on uh, VA premises. I'm like, that is old. And they're all in masks. A lot of the, lot of the patients are in masks and all the employees were in masks. I was like, that I could see. And I'm like, what? That, it's like, am I back in 2021? What is this? Okay, you follow me? So obviously I'm not wearing a mask. Um, I, I go up to the front, she takes my information, she says, yeah, I got you in the system. I sat down, and uh, the guys in the waiting room, these are all military veterans, right? And uh, so it's not like a regular hospital or clinic waiting room. It's just a bunch of uh, military vets, and we all got something in common. So we're all yim yawn, hip happen and talking and yip yeah, you know, oh, I was on the tender and I was on the submarine and I, you know, and back in the day and talking about the Agent Orange and the A triple F and the uh, lead in the water and the, and the you know, we, we're talking about all that stuff. And there's a couple really sad stories too. A couple guys, you know, guys dying of cancer and they're, you know, having, having a hard time getting treatment. And uh, it's just, uh, eye-opening it's just very very eye-opening oh it looks like uh josh is back that was a quick lunch josh <laughs> i just sat down to do this uh, rambling and josh is already back so we got a roller delivered a flat roller for the driveway and josh is back from lunch so i sit down i'm waiting and uh Actually, I, I waited. I, I got there a half hour early. I didn't know how long it was going to take. To, I, I figured I had to do a lot of paperwork. I didn't have to do any paperwork. It was weird. But um, I got there a half hour early, and uh, I got called back about an hour later, so about a half hour after my appointment time. So I've been sitting in the lobby, room, lobby for an hour. So that's my fault, right, getting there early. Um, I get back, and I meet Sharon. And uh, Sharon... 
uh, she'd been there for 20 years or no, she'd been there for five years. She said, the clinic been there for 20 years. I, I had no idea. I, I didn't know there had VA clinics that, uh, again, I'm new to all this stuff. Talk to Sharon. She takes my information <coughs> and a uh, very, very nice lady. She gives me all kinds of information about the VA and all this stuff. And, uh, she said, she, I'm going to take you now to another waiting room and you'll wait for Dr. Lee. So she takes me to another waiting room and I was the only person in this waiting room. I was like, wow, this is, this is, this is a good sign. Good sign. Well, a couple people that I'd seen earlier in the main lobby uh, come and go out of there, and they're like, I was like, wow, this is kind of odd. These people are still here and everything. Um, but eventually, Dr. Lee herself comes to this waiting room and pulls me back to the, to the room. And she sits down, and she asks me, start asking me, and she's typing. She's doing all this information herself. Instead of me filling it out ahead of time or the, uh, the nurse doing it, the doctors. And, and she's asking me, um, is there violence in your home? Um, is, uh, have you had unprotected sex uh, with needles involved? And she's asking all these kinds of, I was like, I've never been asked these kind of questions, you know, just to go get a primary care physician. I mean, ask questions about, uh, when you were in the military, were, were you, did you ever have sexual advances on you that were unwanted? <laughs> like say, what? I, was in the, I, did, I got out of the military in 1998. And uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> but no, no. I didn't. Anyway, so we go, th we go through like a half hour of those type of questions. She's entering them all in the system and everything. When was my last colonoscopy? You know, all kind of things. Get all that. And then I just go over, you know, my mixed connective tissue disease, uh, the, the itch, you know, after, after last Christmas I had, I thought was from the uh, antibiotics. Went through my knee surgery, how I blew it out, what, you know, what, what rehab I'm going through. And uh, asked about, she asked about my kids, you know, what kind of health, you know, uh, situations they're in. My dad, my mom was like, you know, really, just, just a lot of questions. I was really surprised. And she's typing it all in. And, uh, so it actually went pretty well. Uh, found out uh, she's actually retiring at the end of the year, so I'll, she's going to be my primary care physician, but someone else will have to take her place um, because she's retiring at the end of the year. She used to work for uh, uh, the hospitals in Memphis, and uh, she got let go, and uh, now she works for the VA. She's been with the VA for uh, quite a long time. Um, so she wasn't a military uh, doctor. I'm used to military doctors, you know, a little bit different. So, um, I was supposed to get labs done. I didn't know that. And I ate on the way up there. So I've got to go back, uh, to get labs done. And she said, you know, it's good about 45 minutes. She said, uh, oh, for labs, you just come up, you ain't gonna make an appointment. You just come up and say, I gotta do labs. It's a 10 minute wait. They'll get you to take your blood and you leave. I said, okay. So I still got to do that. She also got to transfer a lot of my information from the other, uh, uh, from my, you know, um, uh, gastroenterologist and the orthopedic surgeon. I got to transfer a lot of those files over. So I have to take, that, take care of that. But overall, I was pleased. I'm in the system now. I, I can go see her. I can make an appointment to see one of the other doctors there. I can, you know, I can go to one of the other clinics now. I, I, I'm, I'm in the system and, it, and I didn't have to pay a penny. I didn't have to pay a penny. I didn't get any meds. Uh, I don't think I'm about to pay for meds either. So or the copay is very low, depending on which tier med it is. So I think it's very, very low copay. So I'll tell you how that goes when I get my blood work and if I have to get any meds or anything. Right now, my meds and stuff are all still through my uh, private insurance through work. So, but uh, and I, now I, st I still have to get Morgan some insurance uh, coming up at the end of the year too. So see how that goes. Some of y'all may be wondering what's behind me. Tim, where'd all the where'd all that firewood come from? I got busy. Woo, I worked my tail off this weekend. This is all those 20 trees that were in Grandma Carol's uh, field right here. Got it all cut. You really can't tell from this camera angle, but that's a lot of firewood. So uh, here pretty soon, I got to get the, the, the Kubota, stack it all up, take it over there, and uh, uh, start having some fire pits because I only had like 10 pieces of wood left over there uh, after all the fire pits we had. Um, Jin Jin and I did get all the honey extracted. Oh, my goodness, the the... The, st the bees. <laughs> um, don't know if I told you this uh, uh, yesterday or not, but um, when we were doing the bees, 
uh, one of the girls was, uh, the, the, the bees was in the box and I tried to make sure there was no bees in the box. Well, when we opened the second box, she ran over to the other girl, the other bees, and she said, hey, the honey's over here. And uh, we finished up that last box and the bees just came and there was over a thousand bees on the, on the beekeeping, uh, the honey extracting equipment. And I left it there, came back, and guys, they cleaned it up completely. I mean, the extractor, the, the box, everything, there was no honey left anywhere. All the wax cappings, they com complete, completely cleaned all the honey out. It's pretty amazing. Um, pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, I did get the hot tub set up, and it finally, it got the temperature, and I got in it last night. Ooh, y'all saw the hot, you know, the hot tub on yesterday's rambling. I got in it last night, and uh, it was nice. I had the bubbles. 130 jets and I turn it off and listen to music and watch the stars. I, I talked to Jen and uh, she's like, you got in it before I could, you know, cause she helped me set it up. And I said, well, I had to test it out, babe. Come on. <laughs> so, so when she comes down this weekend, we'll film a ramblings in it. That's right. When she comes down, uh, we'll get a ramblings out of that. So, oh my goodness. It's a uh, beautiful day. No humidity. Uh, it was cool last night. Had the windows open. It's supposed to be 56 degrees tonight. Really needed to be warmer to dry out the dirt so I can get the gravel on the road. Um, Josh is about done with that, so we'll be getting gravel on it very, very soon. I'll have a video out, I believe, tomorrow uh, on Ridge Life um, of the dozer, right? You haven't seen the dozer yet. So uh, dozer work coming out tomorrow and me cutting a tree up. With, oh, yeah, not, not one of these, one of the big ones from the, the, from the ridge. So that will be out tomorrow. And, uh, oh, was the fire? No, the fire was a different day. Okay. I, 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 I get all these, I get all, I got these, you know, days of doing all the land clearing. And I got to remember which was which. So, uh, but yes, dozer, no, dozer is tomorrow. The tree is not. Okay. That's right. Dozer is tomorrow. Um, I hear, I hear Josh's truck running over there. So I probably need to get over there and see what's going on. Make sure they're not waiting for me for anything. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's random story you know about my va uh i was definitely not my on my storytelling game today <laughs> a lot of things going through my mind especially with the land clearing going on um but i love every single one of you and stick around and uh, we'll be live tonight on ridge life tuesday uh, night at 7 p.m and uh, we gave honey away we gave five bottles of honey away and we got it extracted i just got to get it bottled and jen jen comes back we're going to bottle it and get it sent out to all the winners there we did name the bees fireball bees got announced that that night and just uh, it's just been a very fun beginning of summer uh this spring we don't get too much spring here go straight to summer it gets hot. It's supposed to be 98 degrees, I think, tomorrow or the next day. So, uh, until, okay, gonna let you go, guys. Until next time, I hope everyone has a blessed, blessed day. Keep rambling and go Ridge Line.